When you think about a really thin and light laptop, something with a long battery life, impressive performance and premium build quality, then perhaps the laptop that comes to your mind is the MacBook Air. But not long after Apple had launched that original MacBook Air, Asus came to market with their ZenBook. And I've had a few different models of the ZenBook over the years, and I always thought they compared pretty favorably to the Air in terms of size, weight, and build quality, even performance if you're talking about the Intel MacBook Air models. So I was pretty interested to see the announcement for the latest generation of Asus ZenBook, a model they are calling Thincredible. And it does have some interesting details, including a fantastic new display. But is it a potential MacBook Air killer? Obviously, we're comparing two products from completely different ecosystems here. If you want to use macOS, then you're not likely to buy the ASUS and vice versa. And I'm not advocating one platform or another. I use both Mac and Windows in my daily workflow, and I'm always interested to see what's new in both arenas. Now this new ZenBook S13 OLED or UX5304 to give it its model number is just one centimeter thick and it only weighs one kilogram. So it's both thinner and lighter than the M2 MacBook Air. And this new laptop is constructed entirely of magnesium and aluminum alloy. It looks really premium and I like this nice pattern on the lid. It opens completely flat and you've got a 2.8K OLED display. That's 2880 by 1800 resolution with a 1610 ratio. It offers 100% DCI P3 color gamut coverage, but there are also options to switch the display to sRGB, display P3 or native where you can customize the color. Some of the OLED displays I've used have been a little bit too vibrant with the colors, so this is nice to see. And it's a calibrated display which will please content creators. There's 550 nits peak brightness, which should be more than enough for the majority of users. And Asus are confident that their OLED display won't suffer burn-in issues, and they're committing to replacing any screen that suffers burn-in during the warranty period free of charge. But I didn't see any mention in Asus slide deck at the press reveal to say that it's got a touch screen. So if that's something that's a deal breaker for you, you may need to look elsewhere. Performance here is provided by Intel's 13th generation processors, and you can spec up to a Core i7-1355U, which has 10 cores, two hyper-threaded performance cores, and eight efficient cores. That CPU is designed to run at 15 watts, but ASUS are allowing a performance boost up to 20 watts. Now, in fairness, the 1355U can actually boost up to 55 watts, but that's obviously not gonna happen in such a thin and light chassis. But even despite these constraints, the ZenBook S with the 1355U scores actually pretty close to Apple's M2 in Geekbench 6. It's offering around 96% of the M2's single core performance, and you get around 91% of the M2's multi-core performance. And I'm assuming that these scores were set with the maximum power settings. And naturally, the laptop won't be able to sustain that sort of load for long without thermally throttling. But this isn't a mobile workstation, it's an ultra thin and light, and that is a huge amount of performance to have on tap. Now those boost figures are made possible by a neat thermal design with dual fans, but it remains to be seen how intrusive the fan noise will be. Uh, let's talk about graphics now. There are no dedicated GPU options. The uh, ZenBook S is making use of Iris Xe onboard graphics, so there's not much to write home about here. But if you compare it to PCs of just a few years ago with onboard graphics, this is a huge step up. But let's be fair, it's no gaming rig. And it doesn't make a very favorable comparison with the MacBook Air either, because it offers less than half of the GPU performance of the M2 chip. When it comes to memory, you can spec up to 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5 5200 megahertz RAM, and up to a one terabyte SSD, which is PCI 4.0 X4 speed. ASUS are claiming a read speed of up to 6500 megabytes per second with that drive. Uh, obviously, it's not gonna sustain that performance, but that is really fast and nice to have. Most users, I think, will be very happy with the variety of I.O. that's on offer for such a thin and light machine. On the left-hand side of the laptop, we've got a full-size HDMI 2.1 port and two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Over on the right-hand side, we've got a full-size Type-A USB port, and that's a USB 3.2 spec port running at the full 10 gigabits per second. Nice. And it also has a 3.5mm headphone jack. Now I can't tell you what the keyboard's like to type on because we haven't tried a unit yet, but I can tell you the keyboard is made from recycled plastics and that it's thinner than the previous generation. Likewise, the touchpad has been made larger. It's 9.5% larger than the previous generation ZenBook. 
Of course, one of the most important things with an ultra-portable laptop is battery life. And Asus are claiming 14 hours here, though you can expect less than that if you're using all of the performance from that uh, Intel chip. But a full working day of office apps and video calls ought to be possible without the need to charge. But if you do need to plug in, 30 minutes will get you back up to 50% battery. And something I found particularly intriguing is an innovation that Asus is calling the plasma ceramic aluminium coating. Uh, they showed us this video here of the manufacturing process. Essentially, there's a ceramic coat bonded to the outside of the laptop, which helps it to resist dirt and marks. So, is the ZenBook 13S OLED going to be a MacBook Air killer? Well, perhaps not on raw performance, but the display is certainly a step up and is very compelling. And if you need a thin and light notebook for Windows and premium build and features are important to you, then this is going to be worth a look. Asus have been building Ultrabooks for the best part of a decade, and my personal experience with them has been generally very good. The public launch of the ZenBook S is imminent if it hasn't already happened by the time we publish, so I'll update the description with pricing information when I have it. And hopefully Asus will be kind enough to send me a press loaner so that I can do a more in-depth review at some point and give you a better opinion. But until then, let me know in the comments if this model is something that you'll be looking at. And do you think Asus has upped the standard for PC thin and light notebooks? Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today. See you again soon for some more geekery.